Good day. I'm Ian Trust, the Executive Chair of Wunan Foundation, a not-for-profit Aboriginal organisation based in Kununurra in the East Kimberley region of Western Australia. I'd like to share with you a metaphor that I've developed to explain the key issues facing my people, the Aboriginal people of the East Kimberley. It's titled Swimming the River. The way I see it is like this. For most of the past 70,000 years, if you were Aboriginal, you had to cross a harsh and unrelenting desert. In this harsh environment, we not only survived but prospered, and this was long before we had mining royalties and government services. The key to our survival, of course, was a close-knit community where everyone cared about the well-being of each other, where everyone contributed to the survival of your community. If you were a child, you learned from the day you were born how to survive in this harsh environment and the rules which maintained your community. Elders enforce strict norms and values and a sense of responsibility towards each other, our children and our old people. These things were embedded in our culture. A couple of hundred years ago, the first settlers arrived and our world was turned upside down. Our people no longer roamed free anymore and new skills were needed to succeed in this new world. Now, instead of the desert, there were new barriers to our survival that we needed to navigate. Now we had to learn to swim a river. And where you learn to swim this river is at places they call schools. These schools are set up to teach you how to read and write and other important skills so you can swim the river. And the reason that we must learn to swim the river is because all the opportunities in this new world are on the other side of the river. These opportunities include things such as jobs, houses and business opportunities all of which contribute to a better life. Many of our families have learned to adapt to this new world and understand the importance of their children learning how to swim from an early age. These families support their children, walking alongside them all the way to the bank of the river to make sure they know how to swim. Even when these children go all the way through school, they don't swim straight across the river, but they make it to the other side because they've learned one of the most important skills, how to adapt. Unfortunately, in the East Kimberley, we estimate that only 40% of our families walk alongside their kids all the way to the river bank. The other 60% of our families don't understand the importance of parents walking alongside their children. Because of a lack of parental support, the children from these families are in and out of the education system, and by the time they leave school, they haven't acquired the skills they need to swim the river. In most cases, they don't make it to the other side to access the opportunities there. This river is a dangerous place to be. There's a strong current and it's called welfare, and those without the skills or the motivation to cross the river get swept along in the grip of the current. The reason why the river is dangerous is because downstream in the river lives a couple of big crocodiles. These crocodiles are drugs and alcohol. History has shown us over the last 40 years in the East Kimberley, the longer you stay in the river, chances are you will end up in the jaws of one of those crocodiles. Unfortunately for many of my people, that is exactly what has happened. Of course, some of the people who have ended up in the mouths of crocodiles have gone on to be parents. In turn, many of them have not walked alongside their children to the riverbank, and so the cycle passes from one generation to the next. In some families, it has been going on for at least four generations. The byproduct of this tragedy for many families who have been swept down the river has been poor health and living conditions, homelessness, domestic violence, mental illnesses, fetal alcohol syndrome disorder in children, and suicide. Many of them have lost their culture and language and have ended up in prison. The difference between those families who have learnt to swim the river and those who haven't is dependent upon three things. These are having access to opportunities in education, employment, and housing. Having the ability to access these opportunities and having a level of responsibility to bring the other two together. In the East Kimberley, there are plenty of opportunities, and our people have lots of ability, but the thing that is missing is individual and family responsibility. That's what can help people move forward and help us rebuild our culture. A key question to ponder is, why have we not broken the dysfunctional cycle that results in many of our people ending up in the mouths of crocodiles? The answer, I think, is low expectations from the government and from the community at large. The assumption is these people do not have the ability to swim the river. As a result, a lot of money goes into pulling people out of the mouths of crocodiles, rather than ensuring they learn to swim the river. 
The other part of the answer is that people know that the solutions will require some tough decisions in areas such as welfare reform and holding parents responsible for their children's well-being. But the bottom line is that without these tough decisions, nothing will change.